Before we start filming this video, can we just take a moment to appreciate this incredible view of Tbilisi, which is the capital city of Georgia. Hey there, I'm Sarah and this is Murray. Eight months ago, we set off to follow our dreams and travel the world full time. But there's a catch. We have a budget. So we've been looking for the cheapest ways to travel. And honestly, this whole budget travel thing has been going pretty great so far. And we've spent much less money than we anticipated, all while having rich and unforgettable cultural and travel experiences. And now our travels have brought us to the incredible country of Georgia. Subscribe to follow our journey around the world. Tomorrow we are heading to our next country. So we'll be leaving Georgia and after two months of staying here and taking in every cultural experience, we really want to just take a moment to reflect on everything we've learned and enjoyed during our time in Georgia. This is of course our own personal experience now. And this is stuff that we've learned and picked up during our time here. But please, if there are any Georgians out there who know better than us, please do let us know in the comments down below. We absolutely love learning about this country. So as we mentioned in previous videos, Georgia has been fighting for literally thousands of years to keep its religion, to keep its culture and to keep its language. And this is just so evident in its everyday like functioning as a country that Georgian people are just so patriotic and so passionate about their country. It just comes across in everything that they do. And an example of this is just the language itself. Because the language is so old to us, it just feels like such an ancient language. And just like when they're talking, when you're busy listening to to them even if they're talking about something random like the weather it always sounds like they're saying something so profound and even like when you're listening to children talking about a cat for example <laughs> they just sound so wise and it's just such an incredible experience just to hear them talking and honestly if there was a language that i could speak fluently i would choose georgian that's saying a lot because you have polish heritage and just to add on to that, the main religion in Georgia is Orthodox Christianity and you can honestly find it in every corner of Georgia. Religion is a big thing here. The Georgians take their faith and their religion very seriously and it's something that's quite cool to see the nation like unified in that thing. I think that's something that we've really appreciated in their language, in their culture, in their religion. Georgians are very, what is the word, patriotic and very unified in their culture and their religion and their language. Everything they do here, they just seem so unified. One last thing about Georgian culture and something that I found quite interesting is that Georgians don't actually refer to Georgia as Georgia. They call Georgia Sakartfelo. Now just talking about like the geographical size of Georgia, Georgia is not the biggest country. So just to think everything that they've managed to achieve with all their fighting and all the wars over the thousands of years, it's just so impressive that they still get to keep all of their cultures and traditions traditions and languages. It really just like adds to them being such a proud and such a strong nation. One of our absolute favorite parts of Georgia was the food here. Oh my goodness. It is amazing. And from the very first day that we arrived here and we tasted the food, we've just been like, I'm drooling thinking about it. <laughs> Honestly, coming into Georgia, we didn't know anything about the people, anything about the food, anything about anything. So as we came into the country and as we discovered things as we went, we just fell in love with it more and more. And the food was really a big part of that. And we're sad to say goodbye to it. It's honestly been some of the most amazing and tasty food that we've ever tasted in our lives. A big part of Georgian cuisine is the use of fresh herbs. And honestly, you can pick it up in every single dish that you have, whether it's a salad, whether it's a beef stew, whether it's just eggplants, there's just herbs in everything. And it is so, so tasty. Marek is big into cooking and he's honestly been taking notes on recipes and wanting to take the way of making food from Georgia. I don't know if that's even the correct way of saying that, but the way that they make food here and their techniques, he's wanting to take that back to South Africa someday so that we can cook the food the same way for ourselves one day. That's how much we've really, really enjoyed it. So if you're sipping on a glass of wine right now, you have Georgia to thank for that. They created wine 8,000 years ago in a very traditional Georgian vessel 
called a Quevri. Now we were lucky enough to spend a couple of weeks on a Georgian wine estate, or winery rather, we were learned everything about the wine production process and of course we tasted so much wine so during our much time there. Wine. <laughs> something important to mention when you're talking about alcohol and eating in Georgia is something called a tomata. Now a tomata is basically the toast master, I think it's called, yes, the toast master who will sit around the table, everyone's sitting around the table to eat dinner and the tomato will be making the toasts for the evening. So he sits down and before you can drink he always needs to give a toast. Now one of these toasts is something very profound as well, it's always like bless Georgia or bless our wives and our daughters because we would not be yes. able to live without our women. And <laughs> that was exactly what he said the one time actually. <laughs> and for one of the meals, because we're from South Africa, the tomato was saying to like welcome us and to make us feel welcome and to do a toast for us and for South Africa and for Georgia together in the future. Something along those lines, but something to give a toast to South Africa and to Georgia. Now something to remember when you're with the tomato as well is that you never drink before the tomato has the alcohol or the wine in, in his mouth. mouth. <laughs> it will like happen going. so often <laughs> that you're busy you're getting ready to drink and as you're about to the tomato takes his glass away and he starts speaking again and then he brings it close and then you're about to sip and then no he takes it away and he starts speaking again. <laughs> so it's important to know that only start drinking once the tomato has the alcohol in his mouth or her mouth. Another interesting thing on top of this is that when Georgian people drink wine they don't sit and sip and sip on wine like we would think about it. They sit around a table there's just a massive spread of food and they fill the glass all the way to the top. Now you don't sip on it but rather you drink it as a straight shot all the way down. For those of you who know me you'll know that I'm a very lightweight drinker. <laughs> when we have these evenings I've had to sort of say no a couple times and just say I'm sorry like I'm sipping otherwise I will literally fall over at the table but this is something that they do daily you know like they daily sit down for dinner they drink so much wine in this country and we love it <laughs> <laughs> something that's pretty cool about this as well is that once you've finished drinking your wine to show the tomato that you have finished every little drop in the glass you take the glass take your little thumbnail you tip and point the glass onto your thumb get that very last drop onto your nail and then you suck it and you say, Tamara, I finished everything. And then he gets a little clap because he's very proud of you. <laughs> I can literally see that in my mind, Dutch or doing that. <laughs> the Georgian nation is just so hospitable. And like an example of this is when we were at our work away in Sferi. We were staying there and we literally only had one set of neighbors. <laughs> now the second day that we were there, these neighbors were having a bit of a get together. They were drinking chacha, which is a very hard Georgian Ooh. alcohol. They were drinking chacha and they were having a full spread like feast of food. Now we were just there next door, minding our own business, doing some work. And all of a sudden our host ran into the house and said, come, come, come. You've been invited to go next door. And just like that, we had never met the people before. They invited us over to their house and we started drinking chacha with them and just eating their food which was delicious but just going into this the Georgian people they have a saying that the guest of yours is a guest of mine so basically we were guests of our hosts which automatically made us guests of our neighbors which is just so amazing and they're just again they're just so hospitable and really just make you feel so welcome and so part of the family it's a beautiful aspect of the Georgian culture they are all very welcoming and friendly and hospitable and just warm and you can feel like love from a stranger and it's really beautiful This is something that we've literally only learned because you have spent so much time here. And those are the two questions that you are always asked. The first question is, do you love Georgia? Whenever you meet a local and they find out that you're from a different country and you're busy traveling through Georgia, they always ask you how you've enjoyed it so far. Whenever you give them an answer of we absolutely love it or we've really, really enjoyed it, it just makes them so happy. And you can see like their heart swelled with pride for their country and the fact that there's been outside people coming into their home country and that they've loved it just as much as what they do. Now the second question, now this one is quite funny and we enjoy it as well. Whenever you're sitting down at a Georgian table, the main question that they always ask you as soon as you start eating, does the food have enough salt? <laughs> 
And they use a lot of salt they in the They do food use here. a lot of salt. And, but the thing is that it is perfectly salted as well. When they use salt, they've got these massive boxes of like flaky salt and they rip those things open and just throw salt everywhere and they climb through one of these boxes of salt in the matter of days it seems now although they throw the salt everywhere over all the food the food is just so perfectly seasoned and this is something that we'll definitely take back with us home one day so the next point is something that's a little bit of a downer and it's the only negative thing we have to say about georgia and that is to do with the plastic consumption here. The plastic usage here is just through the roof. So for example, shopping. We try to keep the packets that we get from shopping and reuse them, but what happens is that we'll take our packets to the shop and be reusing them and have everything in our packets and then all of a sudden we're just being given more packets and our things that are already in a packet are, are put in another packet and it's just like plastic, 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 which is really unfortunate and we have have tried our best to cut down on our own personal plastic consumption but another thing that adds to that is that a lot of people in Georgia don't drink the water here so they'll be buying water in plastic bottles daily which I don't really know why I guess people don't really like the taste of it but we've been drinking the water, water here beautiful. <laughs> it really is good <laughs> especially the water in Batumi we really enjoyed that water this way of drinking water obviously adds to the problem and just plastic consumption in general is really high in this country The public transportation here has been so good for us. We've literally used the trains, the buses, the marshrutkas, which are like mini buses that go between the cities, the taxis, the bolts, even scooters. Bye. No! <laughs> and we've literally found this public transportation to be the easiest and the cheapest to use out of all the countries we've traveled to so far. Like we were trying to think to ourselves, what is it that makes it so easy? When you're talking about marshrutkas, they're pretty informal. Like you just rock up at the station, you say where you want to go and you just find the bus that's going there, pay and you wait until the bus goes. But maybe that's what actually makes it easy to use. The fact that it's so informal and then you've got the locals who are so willing to help you. If you take a bolt to any bus station, you can tell them on your way there, this is where we're trying to get to, they will take you to the mashrutka, the exact one that you need. It's just straightforward and uncomplicated and we haven't had any issues with using the public transport yet. And because I stay up editing so late each and every night, we're talking between two and four every morning. Something that I've noticed is just how late people go to bed here. Hand in hand with that is how late everything starts as well. So it's like a late start, late end type of thing to each and every day. An example of this is just how some shops only open between 10 and 12 every morning. But then with that, you do see how late things do stay open. An example of that is the little Airbnb that we're staying at over here. It's a tiny convenience store, only big enough for two people to fit in. This lady stays open with a convenience store till 10, 11, maybe even later, every single night. So it's not uncommon to see people still working on construction sites and hammering away using the drill at 8, 9 o'clock in the evening. Now this point is more like a feel thing rather than something that we have seen. So Georgia is an incredibly old country, but they are very young in the way that they're doing things. You can just see that if we give an example like for technology, you can see exactly where they are trying to get, but you can see that they're not quite there yet. Give them a few more years and they will be exactly on par or even on top of other top countries around the world. And it's just so cool to see this process of a country busy developing and seeing them get to a place where they want to be. So our last point is something that will be very helpful to anyone planning on traveling to Georgia in the future. And these are a couple of things we've picked up through our time here and things that we've learned that have really helped us during our stay here. And one of them is visas. So in our, one of our earlier videos, we mentioned that we had some interesting information for South Africans to travel to Georgia. And this actually applies to quite a lot of other countries or nationalities as well. We'll leave a link in the description with more information. So there's a list with a number of countries on it and citizens from these countries are allowed to travel to Georgia without a visa for a whole 
Yeah, and South Africa is on that list. So South Africans can travel to Georgia for a whole year without a visa, which is amazing. It opens up so many opportunities to come and travel here. And Georgia is such a budget friendly destination. We have been amazed by how little money we've spent here. And we've even splashed out quite a lot during our travels here, which has been so nice because usually we are very, very tight with our money. So it's been nice to eat out a bit more, stay at like Airbnbs, maybe even a little bit fancier than we're used to, <laughs> which has been so, so nice. It's just the fact that you have this whole country as an option to travel to for an entire year. It's just amazing. And you should really consider Georgia as a travel destination. And secondly, this has helped us so much during our stay here, is the particular SIM card we've been using. And we'll put a link or the name of it on the screen here and we'll give you more information about it in the description. After being in Georgia for a couple of weeks, we met someone who told us about a particular package that we didn't even know about, where you could pay five Lowry a week for unlimited data. And the data is fast, like data connection. I don't know what other people call it, data, data. The <laughs> Basically, internet speed. <laughs> the internet speed is so good. I could literally use it to teach my English lessons. So if you are visiting Georgia, planning on visiting Georgia, that SIM card would definitely be the way to go. And it's a weekly plan, so it can really work out very well. Five Lari is such a good price. We actually tested the speed the one day on our very own channel. So we opened up every single playlist that we have. And I think we've got about 11 playlists now. And you can watch each individual playlist at the same time on HD with no buffering. Like that is how fast the internet is. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. Let us know in the comments if you knew any of these things about Georgia or if you just have anything to add. We always love to hear from you guys. We are quite sad to be saying goodbye to Georgia, but we do feel like it's time to head out to our next country and we are very excited for some new adventures. Thank you as well to all of you for all of our support that we have gotten during our time in Georgia. We've just seen such a big growth in our channel during our time here. And we just want to thank you to all the Georgian people who have been watching us and just been commenting on our videos and teaching us more through the comments as well. We really do appreciate you and we really do hope that we've done a good enough job to help like spread. Showcase yes, Georgia. And show just how wonderful your country really is. So thank you to each and every single one of you. Now if you are interested in finding out exactly how much Georgia has cost us to live here for the past two months we'll put a full budget breakdown of expenses that we've incurred during our time here now again we must just reiterate that this whole experience and this whole video is just based on our experience and everything that we have learned during our time here so again please do comment down and let us know in the comments down below if we have missed something or if we got something slightly wrong we absolutely love learning about this country and learning more about this wonderful place and if you haven't done so already please do subscribe we'd absolutely love it if you joined our travels in our next country and of course, we'll see you all back this coming Tuesday. ...told us about a particular package that is offered by the cell phone provider. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're matching. Yeah. Did you do that on purpose? I love it. <laughs>